Nice to meet you. Guten Tag, guten Abend, good evening, and etc. Uh, I will talk uh, about machine learning model in Apache Ignite project. And of course, let's start without uh, some welcoming slides. And uh, please raise your hand who use Apache Ignite, for example, in production. Maybe somebody. OK, I see one person. Cool. Uh, I will talk some facts about myself. Uh, for the last six years, I've been studying for source code for many distributed uh, instruments like uh, Apache Spark, like Apache Hive, uh, Apache Ignite, etc., etc. Maybe you used Tensor, not, not Apache project like Harvard, like TensorFlow, etc. All of them are open sourced. And last two years, I've spent a, a lot of time to uh, build enough good ML module of the Apache Ignite. Uh, I will talk some words about uh, what is Apache Ignite because not so many users are here. Uh, first of all, it's, uh, I, I will give you a very simple definition. It's kind of in-memory database. Yes, it has so many features how to persist uh, on the disk, how to support cache operation, etc. But now, for many use cases in production, it's in memory database. Uh, maybe you could find some parallels with Cassandra or with React, but it uh, fully support AC transactions. First of all, in a has, it has distributed SQL. Uh, these two features are so good, and uh, two years uh, we started a special model in Apache Ignite ecosystem. It was a ML module. First of all, it was linear, linear, linear algebra other the Apache Ignite. But now it's more than algebra. Uh, now, raise your hands who at least trained the model maybe in pet project. Me. <laughs> OK, so many ML guys here. Uh, but who used Spark ML for this, for example? Most of them, OK, cool. Uh, I will talk some information uh, about traditional programming, about machine learning programmer. Uh, and the usual program that the programmer writes resembles a finite state machine, you know, and generally consists uh, of a strict set of instructions. In the machine learning, we have the opposite situation. We need to generate computations, the model. and. Uh, ML task shortly could be described uh, as a search of the best set of uh, parameters for unknown function f, which has known type. For example, it's a line or it's a, a cubic line or something else. Uh, it could be complicated. Most strictly, we have the task of uh, objects x. Uh, y is a set of answers, and f is an unknown relation, finding objects and answers. And uh, the goal is to approximate this unknown function by another function with known uh, hyperparameters. Uh, for example, let's start from the, the simplest model, the linear regression. This is an example uh, of linear regression. As I said, it was mentioned uh, two lectures, two talks ago in Hive Mode talk, uh, which describes the linear dependency between input and output. And our goal uh, to find the best set of double W, w coefficient, right? And uh, how to determine which line is the best? Uh, here, the loss function will help us. MSE, loss function, this is a difference, uh, sum of square deviations between uh, predictions and true answers known before, for example, on the uh, label data set. And we are trying to minimize the MSE result to find the best function. I know that all ML guys know this fact, but we need some introduction here, sorry. And a model can be represented not only via, for example, linear equation or something else, but also as a tree, for example. And this slide is, uh, shown, shows a Titanic passenger data set uh, survival prediction model as a binary tree. This is a very known image. And uh, the next. We are trying to uh, find a certain curve that divides the set of points into two classes. There are a lot of these curves, and we need to find a curve that separates these classes in the best way, according to the last function. We should remember this definition to the next slide. Imagine, imagine that we have a lot of data in the cluster. We 
uh, we'll not talk that this is an Ignite cluster in many cases, maybe it's Spark cluster, Kafka cluster, I don't know, Row, Kubernetes, Kubernetes cluster, etc. And uh, we are trying to find a way to predict on this data. Of course, if you load this data to Apache Ignite, for example, you uh, can uh, train on this data in, the, uh, in memory, in the real time, etc. And Apache Ignite ML library supports not only distributed training, it supports distributed pre-processing, evaluation, parallel cross-validation uh, for higher cluster resource utilization, and so many things. Let's start from the uh, um, First point, you have a raw data, for example, in Apache Ignite or in Kafka. Uh, you can use a special data streamer to load the data into Apache Ignite in, in memory tables. And the distribu distributed uh, pipeline starts from the data loading, in, uh, first of all. After that, uh, via pre-processing, we should prepare a set of vectors. Uh, of course, uh, or many algorithms likes data uh, with double values, not with strings, not with strange enums, not with Java objects, and etc. And the goal of preprocessing to prepare vectors. After that, um, then vectors contain only doubles, which train the model on the vector data. After that, uh, we need um, sometimes not uh, not not uh, not in. Uh, 100 person cases, we need to repeat our training process again and again, again and again. And we don't want to spend the time to prepare this code in Java every time. And uh, here uh, it's very easy to use something like param grid, cross validation, pipeline, API, and etc. For example, like in Apache Spark. Uh, but Apache Spark is not the in memory database, you should remember that. Uh, and in the end, the quality of the built model could be evaluated before deploying on the production. It's a very interesting point. We have a, a lot of different metrics how to estimate the model. And uh, for bi binary classification tasks, for regression, for clustering sometimes, and etc. Uh, all these steps are distributed in Apache Ignite model. You should ask me how. We have the same thing in Apache Spark. Yes, we have the same thing in Apache Spark. Apache Spark and Scikit-Learn are reference libraries for the Apache Ignite model. But mm, uh, I have one small problem. The Apache Spark has a stable, uh, I mean MLLib, has a stable core which uh, has no, I don't know, uh, ability to aggregate new PRs which uh, are located in many issues uh, in the Apache Spark Jira. There are a lot of different PRs, and uh, my goal in Apache Ignite ML uh, to use this experience, to experience of all these users, to involve them into the into new distributed library, which have a chance to merge all these algorithms to support all new features and etc. Uh, I'm not trying to uh, for example, uh, for you, for you uh, say, please drop Apache, Apache Spark ML Leap. No, this is for different use cases. Apache Spark ML Leap is good for the real big data cases, and you have a lot of data. Then uh, this data is managed by Hadoop cluster. But if you have medium data for in memory cluster in Apache Ignite, you need prediction tool too. And this is a bad idea to move it into HDFS to train in Spark in Apache Spark. But Apache Ignite has connection to Apache Spark 2, and you can load uh, data from the Apache Spark data frame operations to train in, in a memory mode. Uh, also, like in Apache Spark, it uses internally uh, distributed data structures. Uh, it's uh, presented like a partition-based data set. Uh, th this is an abstraction layer which sits between machine learning algorithms and uh, the storage, uh, I mean, Apache Ignite caches. And it uses MapReduce-like approach to uh, perform the computation. Of course, uh, in distributed world, you couldn't avoid MapReduce, right? And uh, for many tasks, um, you can you can find your own your custom approach to to use MapReduce approach directly, not via, uh, for example, data frame common approach in Spark, not via right, uh, RDD API and etc. But you can implement your own partition uh, data structures for each algorithm. For example, linear regression and the SVM algorithms has the same 
partition structure, but for example, the decision tree has another. The, uh, and you can find the best formats to prepare them. Uh, in Apache Ignite ML, we are trying to find uh, the best way to present data for each algorithm. Yes, we have a common approach which can be used in your algorithm, but if you want to implement your own storage, you can as a contributor. Uh, let's talk about ML algorithms. Uh, of course, it has uh, a lot of classification algorithms. It's, it's, it's classic library. You have logistic regression, SVM, KNN. I know that it's not distributed well, but you can try. And uh, we implemented INN approximate neighbors. <laughs> I'm sorry uh, to repeat this. INN is approximate KNN. Uh, decision trees, random forest, and random forest is not only one, the ensemble method for the uh, ML library. Uh, also, we support regression algorithms, uh, and of course, and of course, if you <laughs> like uh, the very, very initial uh, neural network architecture, of course, we support multi-layer perceptron, and it uses internally in logistic regression like one layer perceptron there. And uh, let's uh, look uh, on the next, I don't know, I name it like architecture diagram. Let's say uh, we use Ignite caches to extract the in-memory data to build a partition-based data set. First of all, a partition-based data set are its special structure uh, across the cluster, distributed across the cluster, but it's not the uh, raw Ignite format. This is a special format for the machine learning. We uh, don't want to reuse Ignite caches because they are um, uh, was built for another case, it's not for machine learning, but we use it uh, like data source and we uh, minimize the shuffling between the nodes. Mm, uh, partitions are created uh, near the data, uh, located in the Apache Ignite. Uh, okay, first of all, fill the cache. For example, we read Titanic passenger data set to predict who will survive, who not, and uh, we build, first of all, Ignite caches. After that, we make labeled vectors, vector with label, uh, from raw data in caches via, for example, dummy vectorizers. We have a lot of them, uh, and uh, this is a limitation now of uh, Apache Ignite. Uh, we have no full access to the data scheme in Apache Ignite, and this is the reason why we work with indices now. But I think that in next releases, uh, it will be fixed and we will work uh, fully with the uh, meta information like the column names, etc. Yes, this is the issue. Our after that, we define the trainer, decision tree classification trainer uh, with uh, five as uh, max deep of three and uh, uh, minimum impurity as zero. And after that, we feed uh, this training algorithm to the Ignite instance, uh, for example, Ignite session declared before this slide, uh, data cache declared uh, earlier, and vectorizer. We combine them together and feed on this data to get the model. And after that, we use evaluator to evaluate our results. Okay, it's Java, we use generics and so on. Uh, Preprocessors. Of course, the sun will die before we implement all preprocessing uh, from scikit-learn. Now the Apache Spark is not the reference here because scikit-learn has more, much more here. And all preprocessing could be distribu distributed well because uh, in, I don't know, in 90 percent cases, it has only one MapReduce step, sometimes two, not uh, N. Uh, the amount of preprocessor could be compared with Spark, uh, except the NLP preprocessing. And of course, we have normalizing, vector to special normals, standard scaling, min max scaling, max ABS scaling, and etc. And, et and of course, we support on hard encoding uh, because we need to prepare our double vectors. Uh, I think that maybe part of you uh, who are sitting there not uh, familiar with this. Uh, Please imagine, you have something like Java Yenam. I know that most of Apache developers are Java developers, but maybe not so <sighs> all. And we need to present this Yenam like a binary vector. For example, this uh, digit 1 or digit 0 on the special places. For example, we decided that the first column, we will put 1 there, each correlated with the first ordinary item in the Java enum, etc., etc. 
Let's combine together pre-processing, training, and evaluation. We could define their previous steps here, uh, for example, imputing to field missed values, uh, min max scalar to scale, normalization if you need normalization. And uh, you could see that the second preprocessor used the link uh, to the imputing preprocessor, normalization preprocessor, uh, use mean max scalar preprocessor, and etc. The decision tree classification trainer used the last one, a normalization preprocessor. And uh, of course, all calculations are lazy. In reality, uh, where you call the feed, no calculations are running. But when you call the trainer feed, all calculations are started uh, from the first uh, preprocessor. Um, let's go deeper uh, to the linear regression. Linear regression could be uh, implemented via different approaches. There are a lot of them on the internet, archi archive work, and etc. But let's talk about a few algorithms which could be implemented in distributed manner easily. The first algorithm which was added historically to Apache Ignite was the linear regression via LSQR method. LSQR method, it's, uh, it reminds me the SVD. SVD, uh, I mean singular value decomposition method. Uh, the core of this method is the uh, biodiagonalization procedure, uh, Golub, Kahan, Lan, Kurs, Lanchos, I don't remember exactly how to pronounce that. Uh, and the pseudocode could be um, listed like this. And we need to understand how to move this code to the map reduce operations. Uh, we could uh, improve the equations uh, on the slide. We could uh, rewrite them uh, for p parts, for example, at p index uh, in each equation. And uh, in the final, uh, we need to uh, map, reduce at, uh, map reduce stages for each step to perform the calculation. And having selected p steps, we can transform the set of expression, like uh, here. And uh, it was the first algorithm which was implemented. Maybe uh, not very simple, but it was very useful uh, implementation, which you used in many libraries. Uh, another interesting algorithm is stochastic gradient descent, which is used in, I don't know, in half of our algorithms, but not in all algorithms, uh, as a core of calculations. For example, we have, uh, you, you should remember this uh, linear regression model, uh, and we need to find W coefficient, right? And uh, let's write yet one, yet, yet one time uh, MSC, a uh, loss function. And uh, what we could do here, we should minimize the MSC functional. We should get the first derivative uh, of each target variable, right? And the vector of such derivatives named as gradient. And it indicates the direction of the maximum increment uh, of the function at the point, at the, each point, for example. And we can change the W vector of our coefficients according to the value of gradient by special formulas and so on. Iteration by iteration, iteration by iteration. And this calculation could be distributed. Uh, the gradient operation, uh, where the gradient operator is linear and could be calculated on data partition in parallel, on different nodes, for example, I don't know, on different uh, cores if you run uh, it in parallel mode, not in distributed mode. Uh, this is a simple visualization how it works. Uh, there is no difference between distributed gradient and non-distributed gradient. Uh, it gives us the same result here. Uh, this code shows how to use SGD to update the linear model coefficients. Uh, this is not real production code, but this is like a schema. Uh, this is a place in code that wastes a lot of time, I don't know, 99% of time, and it should be distributed due to the easily distributed nature of the gradient calculation, uh, as was mentioned uh, on this slide. This is how we work <laughs> uh, in Apache Ignite uh, ML model. We trying to find a paper, how to distribute it, uh, one or another algorithm. We find the place in code which could be uh, separated for different nodes. Uh, we are trying to find the reference implementation. Sometimes the reference implementations in another distributed frameworks are not so good and has uh, special limitations. But for the last two years, uh, 
on the archive org we're printing a lot of new papers there you can find new approaches to distribute uh, to distribute for example svm algorithm and so on the new frameworks uh, presented in c++ which could be uh, I don't know, became a part of Apache Ignite ML or another library. I hope that uh, some new solutions which, which were implemented in our library could be a reference for another library. So this is not a closed source world. And uh, why do we spend a lot of time on SGD method? Because uh, it's working horse for many our algorithms like logistic regression, uh, simple neural networks, linear regression, SVM, and etc. And if you understand how to implement the SGD method, you could understand the sources, for example, of TensorFlow, PyTorch, and different uh, neural network uh, libraries. Sometimes it's difficult to evaluate how good this uh, or that binary classification model. And the first idea is splitting uh, of the initial data sets uh, uh, on test and train data set. OK, we support this. It's very simple. But sometimes we could get on this operation the effect of the overfitting. And the next, the next idea is k-fold cross-validation. And during this process, Ignite splits our data sets in k consecutive folds. And each fold is used once uh, as a validation, while uh, k minus 1 uh, remaining folds uh, form a training data set. And of course, we could run these calculation in calculations in parallel if you have enough resource cluster cores, for example, and etc. Because in reality, the training uh, not uh, spend all your resources, not all your memory, not all your CPUs, and etc. Uh, also, of course, each ML developer uh, like, uh, likes uh, ML pipelines, and uh, Spark has a very good support of uh, pipeline APIs. And I'm trying to repeat this uh, for newcomers in Apache Ignite ML. It will be very easy to understand what's happened here on the slide. But uh, we implemented more uh, different parameter search strategies, not, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, stupid grid search, but a random search. and. Uh, for example, this summer I added uh, evolution optimization strategy. Uh, maybe you know for discrete optimization tasks, there are a lot of different um, heuristics how to find the best solution on the set of discrete uh, values, for example. And uh, this is one of them. Oh, you, you could use uh, another approach here. You could add new approaches to our library, too, if you will be a contributor or committer on our project. And uh, if you don't know what is genetic algorithm, maybe you remember something from the university courses and etc. Uh, you saw on the set of hyperparameters, like uh, on the uh, genes of the uh, I don't know person in the population, and you need to mutate them, cross over them, reproduce them uh, to find the best solution. Um, also, in our library, they have uh, not only uh, genetic algorithm to tune hyperparameters. We have support of genetic, uh, of distributed genetic algorithms too. It was a very large donation. It was uh, in the early times of our model, uh, and it it works well. There are a lot of different examples. If you need distributed uh, genetic algorithms, you can go and uh, uh, use these algorithms too. After that, we could finish all these pipelines with cross-validation and hyperparameter tuning. We need to uh, declare the instance of cross-validation and uh, run the tune hyperparameters uh, function uh, to get to uh, first of all to mix all previous operators together and. Uh, Find the, for example, for the decision training uh, algorithm, uh, the best max deep and mean and purity decrease hyperparameters, uh, which were uh, presented here like a set of different values. Uh, 
that's not all. Uh, of course, we have ensembles. This is a part of uh, topic today, and maybe s s s some one of you uh, trying to join this talk to hear something about distributed ensembles. Yes, we have full feature of distributed ensembles. I mean, staking, begging, and uh, boosting. Uh, not limited edition like in Apache Spark. Sorry, Apache Spark, but this is the reason why it's located in Apache Ignite. Uh, ensemble Learning builds a set of classifiers in order to enhance the accuracy of a single uh, classifier. For example, uh, the random forest. You know, random forest uh, can, uh, you, you should train a lot of different trees on subset of data and merge the results of voting, for example, like averaging or calculations, the max value of votes. For example, you vote for the first class or for the second class and 100 of trees trying to vote. Uh, but uh, of course, you can use your own custom voters, uh, vote procedures, and etc. Let's start on the uh, begging. This is uh, also called like bootstrap aggregation. This is a special machine learning algorithm which uh, has a common schema for mentioned earlier random forest. Random forest is kind of begging here. Uh, and uh, for example, we're starting from the uh, Splitting the initial data sets on the train and test set and trace set uh, could be split on the special bags, and you can train uh, different models on these bags and join the results. For example, via voting, or for example, for regression tax, via special mean procedure, then you're trying to find the mean value of all uh, predicted results. Uh, also, we have a boosting, and uh, in my opinion, boosting is not a good candidate for distributing, but it's a good candidate uh, for mm, uh, sequential uh, execution, of course, but all uh, training could be distributed. For example, you have a lot of data, and your subset of data is too much and uh, should be located in cluster 2. This is the reason to use our boosting, not uh, another uh, one-thread boosting from cool Python libraries. Also, we have a staking. Uh, staking involves training a learning algorithm uh, to combine the prediction of uh, first-step algorithm uh, to uh, predict the inputs for the uh, second uh, level algorithm. For example, we have partition based data set, train free decision tree model, and uh, and train the logistic regression on the result of, of prediction of this model. This is a very popular uh, technique on Kaggle, you know, and uh, then combiner algorithm is training uh, to make a final prediction, use all of them. It could be very easily used in Apache Ignite ML, for example, via next code to get the result. You train here two decision tree uh, classification models and combine them via uh, special st st staked vector dataset trainer. There you add easily your required trainers defined above uh, and your feed on the data to get the staked model. Also, uh, we support kind of online learning. Maybe it's not the final, de final decision for our library, but we support online learning for all of the algorithms because uh, each developer who uh, starting to add new algorithm to our, our library should implement the update model method uh, to training partitionally. It reminds me uh, the partitional training in scikit-learn, but uh, as we know scikit-learn has no distributed version uh, to train partitionally in distributed uh, environments. Sorry, uh, online machine learning is the method of machine learning to uh, add new information to your model based on the new portion of data. For example, uh, let's imagine you have Apache Spark, uh, which has connector to Apache Ignite. You build the pipeline, you prepare the data, you reduce the data, and load to Apache Ignite. And you need to update the trained model via data pieces uh, from Kafka. You could use Apache Spark, but it has a very, very limited support of online learning for three or five models, I don't remember exactly, uh, via very complex formulas, etc. But here in Apache Ignite, you could easily uh, use update method to update your previous model via a new portion of data, uh, load it via data streamer. I, uh, I'm not going to add the code of loading, but you could see how to use update method here. You have a logistic uh, regression trainer. Uh, the, the 
all hyperparameters. We feed on the first portion of data, on the data cache one, and the uh, model two uh, could be uh, built there. Uh, model one updated with portion data located in data cache two. It works. It works for all of our algorithm. I agree. I agree. This is a mm, very interesting field. I mean that now on archive org, of course, uh, there are a lot of papers how to do the uh, models which should be updated online in real time. There are many, many, many different heuristic approaches, and you could go to our community and implement what you want for new algorithms and maybe something rewrite for the uh, more. Uh, for old algorithms too. Uh, also, in, in the end, we will uh, finish our talk. Uh, I, I want to say some words about TensorFlow integration. Of course, we have two ways uh, in our community to build our own uh, neural network framework uh, above Apache Ignite or use the existing. We started from the multi-layer perceptron, we played with uh, reinforcement learning architectures in PRs and etc. But we understand the power of community is limited and uh, we should uh, collaborate with existing cool solutions like TensorFlow. I know that many data scientists use PyTorch too and I hope that somebody who will go to our community could help us with this integration. But I'm not a PyTorch user. I, 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 I'm enough good with uh, TensorFlow. I couldn't stand the source code and etc. And uh, it was the reason why uh, three of us collaborated with uh, TensorFlow and we created a special bridge for that. Um, we made a few commits to Apache Ignite uh, to uh, uh, prepare all infrastructure for integration to TensorFlow uh, for Bridge. It's located in special uh, TensorFlow I.O. package or something else. It was in one place in TensorFlow 1 and it's in another repository in TensorFlow 2 because of evolution of TensorFlow. And uh, for TensorFlow, we supported uh, saving to our in memory file system, uh, supported loading from Ignite data set data to the TensorFlow to train on them internally in TensorFlow, and we support uh, the distributed backend. Like a Haravod, but historically our distributed backend was earlier uh, because we don't know about Haravod uh, and implemented this, and guys in TensorFlow doesn't know about that two years ago. Uh, we provide Apache Ignite integration like distributed backend. You could use this, this backend like for distributed calculation of gradients in TensorFlow. Uh, for example, here this is example of loading data from the Ignite dataset, for example, from SQL public uh, kit and cache uh, to iterate on them, to print out the data. Uh, this is the another example uh, in, in Python, uh, how to use, uh, how to distribute uh, your calculations via TensorFlow device, uh, how to run the job, and etc. Uh, all examples are actual for the TensorFlow 1. I think that in the next few months, we will support TensorFlow 2. Again and again, I will say, if you want to support uh, TensorFlow 2, you could go our community and could help. Because you know, uh, we have not so many hands for that. <laughs> Um, but we have so many opportunities. Uh, and uh, it works uh, like how you uh, create uh, separate uh, TensorFlow instances uh, together with Apache Ignite uh, uh, nodes, and it could easily communicate with TensorFlow boards and so on. Also, sorry, sorry, in, in the end, I should say about some integration points, because for th this talk, for me, this is a purpose to invite you to our community, to, to, to invite you to build the uh, Apache Ignite ML, and I want to talk about few opportunities, because the first opportunity for newcomer is integration. You know one tool, you could integrate it with our tool, and this is a point of collaboration. And we have different support for model inference. This is, uh, that means that we could get the model trained in another system, load to us, and predict on our data. We have special infrastructure for distributed inference. And for example, you could load uh, data from scikit-learn via PMML, but this, it, it, we have very limited support for PMML format. But of course, we could extend it in future. We have full support for XGBoost models. Uh, we have uh, 
support for all Spark models, uh, which has the neighbor in our whole library. Uh, we have uh, full support of MLIP, uh, this special tool uh, in many time for Spark only model to load and predict on a trained Spark uh, pipelines which were trained in Spark cluster, for example. Uh, you, we have two points to integrate with Spark. We uh, directly parse the Spark binary format, for example, parquet files, and so on. And then our approach is uh, another approach to use MLLib runtime. We don't know what will be in a Spark community and trying to support all of them. And you don't believe, uh, two days before the summit, uh, someone from H2O community prepared the pull request uh, how to parse H2O to a model to uh, inference uh, in Apache Ignite. We didn't merge it yet, but I think that in the next release it will be merged, and we will have more in inference points. For example, MLLib usage looks like that. We uh, run a MLLib context. We use special Ignite distributed model builder to build the model from the file system. Of course, in many cases, we should parse the file with special structure here. And this is a work for integration. This is not very difficult work, but very meaningful. Uh, if we have a lot of uh, different integration points, we could uh, make our tool stronger, of course. And uh, we could make predictions on our model, like on model training in Ignite. For example, uh, the architecture diagram looks uh, like that for Spark ML model parser. You have Apache Spark. For example, you trained the model there. You use um, very usual method uh, on a Apache Spark model write, overwrite, save your model to the directory or to the file, to the parquet file, of course, or to the directory of parquet files. And we could parse, for example, uh, this kind of model. Uh, this is gradient boosted trees, uh, if I remember exactly. Uh, and we could load, uh, we, uh, for example, we could load new data uh, or we could uh, upload, I don't know, new piece of information. We could load this model via Spark model parser parse method. Uh, there uh, we have a special Java enum for all supported models. You could add new models there if you find them. And predict on this data too. It works. Uh, it could be your application. This is a motivation architecture diagram. If you have a lot of different points uh, where you need to load the data to one storage and you have no not petabytes but terabytes of data, uh, you could uh, load the model from Apache Spark via Spark model parser. You could uh, uh, load new piece of data from Kafka or Flink via data streamers to Apache Ignite. You could update the Spark model via uh, partially trained uh, models, uh, partially trained models from piece of data from Kafka Flink and merge them together, combine them together in one large model, which will be uh, stored in our internal model storage. Yeah, <laughs> how to contribute? How to contribute? I hope that all this slide wasn't so hard. I think that uh, mathematical formulas, this is the reason why you uh, have deal with uh, machine learning and etc. And if you're interested in, I don't know, in um, different challenges with distributed nature, with machine learning, with integrations and etc., you could join our community. We have uh, 200 contributors. Uh, 50 maybe committers and 30 PMC members. Uh, we have blog, we have Ignite documentation, separately ML documentation. Uh, contribution to the documentation are welcoming too, <laughs> like in, uh, in other Apache Ignite communities too. And I want to publish some things for Ignite uh, free. Uh, dot zero. This is a very, very uh, long roadmap for us. We want to have more deals with NLP, natural language processing, uh, more integration with TensorFlow. We want to work close uh, with TensorFlow, with PyTorch, with H2, add more clustering algorithms. We have not enough clustering algorithms now, um, only Kamins and uh, EM algorithm. And we want to add very basic statistical package. Now we miss this one because maybe we have no cool mathematics 
mathematicians or statisticians in our community. And if you're cool and start, let's join us. And of course, we have a lot of tasks for beginners. For example, last year I've mentored two guys who take uh, the task with label new for newbies, and we uh, spend a lot of time on GitHub to f for reviewing uh, on dev list to discuss new proposals, etc. And now uh, both of them are. Our committers, and uh, I think that uh, one newcomer will be committer too next year. I hope because they did a lot of tickets. Um, if you're interested in this project or this opportunity, follow me, uh, join the Twitter. Uh, go to the GitHub and join to the Apache Ignite community. Of course, we have not only ML tasks. If you're interested in can distributed SQL, distributed caches, different operations, cool Java multi-threading uh, world and uh, approaches, you could join too. This is really, really hard job, like we like. <laughs> we all together. Thank you. <laughs> if we have time for questions, have we? Have we time? <laughs> Do we have a time? Yes, yes. Maybe somebody is ready to get the ticket. <laughs> I don't know. OK, I, I, I will be here uh, after the, this session. I think uh, 10 minutes here. And uh, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> on the downstairs near the tea. And we could drink some tea and discuss uh, distributed ML, if you're interested. OK, thank you.